When Honda introduced this car, there was a lot of hope that they had brought back the CRX. Sadly, everybody was disappointed. Welcome to VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. I'm here with the Honda CRZ. It's got its little anemic one point, I don't know, three liter, one liter engine with uh, the integrated motor assist. And performance wise, it actually pretty closely matched the Honda CRX. Acceleration times were similar uh, and the car had the same kind of sporty look. The problem was though, Honda had come out with the K20 and that had kind of set the standard for performance. So when this came out without a K20 in it, people were super disappointed in the whole thing. Well, we're about to make that correction and go ahead and we're gonna swap not only a K20, we're gonna do a K24 in this and give this a little bit of speed. We're gonna be doing a lot of things. We're gonna give this a test to see what kind of acceleration it has with this engine. We're gonna be doing tests again once we get the K24 in as well. It's been a long time since we've done this swap. We've learned a few things. Some things have changed, so we're gonna show you everything that's needed in order to do that. This car, when it's done, is gonna be a normal street car. It's gonna have AC. It's gonna have Honda's awesome K-Series engine in it, and it should be everything the look of this car promises to be a sporty little CRX replacement. Let's get to the test. Way back in the day when this car first came out, I was super excited. At that particular time, we were still regularly showing at the SEMA show and Honda was giving out a bunch of these to different tuners in order to see what they could do with them. We, of course, put in a proposal to do a K-swap in it and were flat refused a car basically because Honda did not want to promote an engine swap in their hybrid car. So we had to wait a year in order for the car to come out and a few of them to get circulated around. And then Eibach approached us to do a K-swap in their car, which we did. Eventually, we wound up buying iBox K-Swap car, and uh, we've had it for quite a while. We are gonna be doing more with that particular car as well. It hasn't been on the road for quite a few years, but this car is lightly modified. It has teen suspension, so it feels super flat and fun to drive, yet it's still comfortable. It's got fully working AC. The battery health seems to be pretty good still on this thing. I actually made sure that I charged the battery up fully so that when we went and did our run, we had a, um, a fully charged battery so we get the best possible acceleration we could in our little eighth mile test. This is a nice car. Uh, it's got, let's see here, no idea. It has uh, less than 200,000 miles on it. It had a fairly easy life. Most of the travel has been on highways, so it's actually a really nice example of a CRZ. It also has just some light damage on the front. Apparently something hit it on the grill and the right front bumper, so it's got a little bit of a repaint there. It's the perfect candidate because these cars are coming back down in price again. We recently saw one for uh, $4,100, uh, and it seems to me that the price is $5,000 and less for some of these uh, when they get up around 200,000 miles. Now eventually what's gonna wind up happening is the battery packs are gonna wear out on all these things. And I'm not sure how long Honda's gonna support new battery packs for that. There are companies that rebuild the battery packs, but there may wind up being a bunch of these available for sale with battery, bad battery packs and getting well under $5,000. So I'm looking forward to that. I think there'll be more case swaps on this. There is a company that does a lot of case swaps. It's uh, tuners. We are going to be using some of their products in the swap to make things a little bit easier. And of course, we'll be using Hasport engine mounts, Hasport axles, and a K-Pro uh, for modifying our 06 Civic SI ECU so we can run our K24. Anyway, let's get to the test and uh, see how it does. All right, we did a 12.31 on that first run. 
Let's turn around and uh, see if we can back that up. That was a little bit better. We did an 11.91 on that particular run. Top speed of 61 miles an hour. That's funny. It's over 20 miles an hour slower than our, uh, yeah, we got a guy staring at us here. Over 20 miles an hour slower than our EG. So anyway, let's head back. We've uh, ruffled enough feathers for today. Man, this car drives nice. I mean, I, this car, <laughs> I love these little things. I might have to turn mine back into a daily driver. I really like driving this thing, but obviously we need a little bit more power. It was 20 miles per hour slower than the EG and probably 10 miles an hour slower than most of the other cars. We are now going to wheel it into the shop and pull out the battery pack. I'm curious if changing out the battery pack in the engine actually results in a lower weight overall. Luckily, I own the service manual for this, so we are going to be removing the batteries properly using Honda's instructions on how to do it safely. The last thing I want to do is send 440 volts through one of my employees. Uh, Brian has enough trouble controlling his hair without uh, that type of shocking experience. So I can't wait to get started on this. This is going to be a fun car when it's all done. The last time you'll hear it run that way. <laughs> a lot of things have changed over the year since we did the first K-Swap back in 2011. And uh, we're gonna kind of revisit that swap. Uh, these cars should be coming along with worn out batteries and stuff like that. So we're gonna go ahead and run through the whole process. Uh, we have a manual. This is the Sears E manual. Shows us the proper way to take the batteries out and everything like that. We're working with over 400 volts here and uh, a wrong move could cost you uh, quite a bit of uh, pain, uh, maybe even your life. Uh, so there are some procedures you need to do. I would totally suggest that you get a hold of the manual and you can actually download it, uh, parts of it if you need to from uh, techinfo.honda.com if you uh, don't wanna go splurge on a manual. I think you get a weekend for like 25 bucks and you'd be able to go through the whole process uh, rather than purchase a manual. But uh, we're gonna be doing this according to the manual to make sure everybody's safe and uh, we're gonna show you how it's done. So I have Scott and Brian here. They're gonna be the ones working on the car uh, and uh, let's get started. It says wait five minutes at least for the voltage to drain. Oh, the rear seat back was yeah. pretty easy. It was just a couple. 12 headed uh, bolts into some little uh, brackets down here and came right out. So I should be able to get the package tray out so I can get the side panels out. Side panels are where all the wiring goes? Well, side panels, there's some wiring and then these uh, these straps right here Got that it. hold the battery pack uh, go underneath the uh, side panel plastic so okay get those out of the way i have to switch off i just connected the bus I'm hoping not to find any more power in here <laughs> i'm getting to here to disconnect the actual motor wires and then i have to read on how to get this plug out because i think once we get those wires those are out and then that wire is the last wire and we can pull the battery out well once he gets the side panels out 
No, don't fall in anywhere. That's out. Let's break for lunch. Like we were never here. Here's our block off plate from tuners. A couple bolts, block off plate to do where the wiring for the battery was for the electricalness. Cut this a little shorter. You can always cut more. It's difficult to cut less. Although it is metal, we can just walk it back together. <laughs> So this isn't our first CRZ case swap we've done. We actually did it on the red and black car 2007, I think. Wait, what, what year was that? 2010? 2011. 2011. So we've actually done a, a, a swap before on a CRZ. Uh, this one we decided to do a little bit differently uh, just to kind of see if we could simplify it a little bit. Uh, a couple things. Uh, we used the stock radiator. Uh, we just built up the outlets using shrink tube that actually has adhesive on it so it should stay tight we actually wound up using um, screw clamps rather than spring clamps because they're slightly undersized um, and i didn't want to build it up too big so that that's a little bit different last time we put a custom radiator in it um, we also want ac in this car which we didn't do in the original one so for the ac hoses we took the fit stuff this is from the ge fit GE fit uh, it had a hose that came out of the firewall that actually was separate if you look at the stock one it was kind of crazy and this lets out straight into the head and we didn't want to have to tweak it and bend it and stuff like that but it's kind of an interesting design 
this other tube actually surrounds this one, probably keeping the refrigerant cool or whatever. So kind of interesting design. Uh, but we went with the fit one where this is separated out and it comes down underneath the frame rail. And Brian was actually able to massage the line correctly in order for it to, to fit. We use the CRZ condenser because it's essentially the same as the fit one. So all the hoses lined up. Uh, the only thing, I don't know if you guys saw our 2012 fit deal. We wound up actually having our hoses have custom ends brazed on. On this particular one, we decided to try something different. We actually tried reclocking the stock fittings. It turns out that those fittings are actually just press fit. And we were able to actually grip them in such a way that we could reclock them. So we just reclocked the stock fit hoses. And it was um, really only that it was really only that one to the condenser. That one just needed bent well, a little bit. Well we barely did it because this hose wanted to collapse when it when oh, we twisted yes. it to do it. So we had to clock it about, I don't know, five degrees. If that yeah. And then, then we wound up just kind of separating them a little bit so they weren't you know rubbing against each other, which would eventually cause wear. Um, so using the stock condenser was nice. Using factory fit hoses, I actually just went down the salvage yard and pulled them off a off a off a fit. We just cleaned them out and put those on. Uh, the compressor is from a TSX. It was a three-wire compressor. We took a couple of TSXs apart, so I happen to have a TSX compressor. I'm hoping it's good. If it's not, we'll swap it out again. Uh, we'll buy a new one this time. Uh, but this is a factory Honda one, so I wanted to give that a try first. Um, there's no room for the normal condenser cooling fan. So we're probably going to make a special bracket to put a smaller fan back here. The other option, of course, would be to put it on the front of the condenser. That'll be our backup plan if we can't fit one back there. Uh, I don't want to do that because you'd probably be able to see it through the front of the car. But, you know, it's... Uh, on the fit, did we put one on the front? Yeah, we did. So, yeah. but anyway, yeah. It works. It works, yeah. <laughs> but the fit doesn't have, is a little bit different construction on the front end. So, but either way it would work. Um, wiring was not terribly hard. We have a 2006 Civic Si engine harness on this engine. Yep. Um, did you have to lengthen it? We had to lengthen a couple things, right? Because this, or no, we didn't. No, the only thing I had to change was the crank sensor. Crank sensor, yeah, because we had the, this engine came out of another car and it had the other style crank sensor on it. So we had to change the crank sensor to match the plug that we had. Uh, and then we used an adapter harness. Last time we did this fit, I actually modified the C101 plug, which is this ginormous plug right here. I just switched a bunch of stuff around. This time around though, we used one from Tuners. Tuners is a company in Washington that does a lot of uh, parts for CRZs and K-swapped S2000s. Uh, we use their adapter harness. It only comes with the primary O2 sensor, so yeah. if we want to be fit state legal, we need to add the wiring. They'd probably do that. That's probably an option. Uh, we didn't get that. Right now, it doesn't have a catalytic converter. That's going to change here before a lot, too long. And when we do that, we'll jump in there and add the secondary O2 sensor. It would go in that, that wiring would go in that harness. So the wiring's done. We use another product from them as well. Brian did most of this work here. That's why I'm referring back to him. <laughs> what was the other part? You know, block off plate? Oh, uh, well, block off plate for the wiring where the battery was and the... Uh, oh, back, that's right. Back for the... Well. Yeah, for the fact, yeah. Of course, there's the giant batteries in the back and then with the giant cables that come forward for the transmission, they have a really nice aluminum block off plate. We use that as well. Yeah, that plugs up that hole. So all in all, it's pretty much ready. It needs, uh, we have an intake air tube getting welded right now with the pr proper bungs on it. Uh, it's not done. It'll have our intake air temp sensor hole uh, so we can connect that and an air filter. Uh, but we can actually test it out right now. It has a 2006 Civic SI ECU in it. This came out of a pre-production Honda way back in the day. But any 2006 to 2011 Civic SI computer will work for the swap. We're going to be hooking, uh, there will be a different ECU that goes in. This one's mine. But for the purpose of using it, we can set this up. Uh, 
because the ECU has not been reflashed to accept the to talk to the MICU and to accept the key, I expect that when we fire it up, it'll prime the fuel pump, uh, which we can check for fuel leaks, and then it'll fire up and die almost immediately. But that's what we're going to do. Uh, oh yeah, we're going to open a header too. Header brings up another point. The header on this is an 06 Civic SI header. It does not fit with the factory front sway bar. So if you don't want your front end leaning a lot, stiffen up the front springs. Um, I don't know if anybody can make another sway bar that doesn't interfere with the header or make a header that doesn't interfere with the sway bar, but that's a product somebody can make. But anyway, we're, I think, ready to fire it up. So Brian, let me know if, if it scorched you in the eye with, uh, with uh, fuel, tell me to turn it off. I hope not. I think I heard it. Well, it may not be priming. So I think our next step here is to, uh, we didn't see any fuel come out, right? No. Yeah. It this, sounded like there was fuel in the fuel rail. It did sound like it. fuel in the fuel rail. Maybe the immobilizer works slightly different in this particular model. Uh, I was basing my opinion on how it worked out with our 2012 fit. So it may be different than this. So I am going to go find somebody with the proper tools in order to reflash our computer so it accepts this key. And we will try this again. So Doug came by and uh, did a little magic. He had a snap-on, what do they call that? A computer reader? Some computer thing? that's cost more yeah. than cars. Yeah, <laughs> anyway, box. it's a magic box. It's supposed to mimic the Honda box. Uh, and he was able to uh, talk to the MICU and the computer. He actually programmed the CRZ VIN into our SI computer. Uh, that way it'll read properly at emissions. And uh, told them that uh, it belonged in there. So it still has the 06 Civic tune though. And if we so to choose to hook up our Honda data, we can go ahead and modify that as well. But should be ready to fire up. And while I was on, John over at FutureFab welded up our uh, two nipples on the uh, our intake air tube so that we'd have that in there. <laughs> Nipple. <laughs> the header is a DC sports header uh, for the 06 Civic SI. It fits nicely except for the sway bar. So the sway bar needs to be removed. At some point, somebody may come up with a sway bar that doesn't have a big hump in the middle of it in order for it to fit with the SI header, or somebody may come up with a CRZ slash GE fit specific header. That would work as well. Uh, sounds like a product somebody needs to make. It's open exhaust right now. Uh, we'll see how that sounds. Fire it up. Fire it up. All right, here we go. Hey! That's obnoxious, but it started. <laughs> I'm feeling pretty good about that. Cool. I think our exhaust tubing arrives tomorrow. So we will quiet this sucker down a little bit. Well, the car for the most part is wrapped up. Uh, we made a custom exhaust for it. And actually, I gotta say, we actually recycled a custom exhaust. We took the one off of our CRZ, uh, made a few modifications to it. So this car has a header plus catalytic converter plus a two and a half inch uh, custom exhaust on it. So pretty much it's ready to go. Uh, the only thing left to do really is the AC, but I want to take it for a test drive and make sure everything's working mechanically before I fill up the AC unit. I don't want to have to drain it if I have to make some changes, but the car in its current condition is ready to go out and test in the eighth mile. So we're going to do that right now and see how it does. Let's go for a ride. All right. We have satellites. Let's see what we can do. All right, taking the CRZ down to uh, run it in our eighth mile little track here. Not tuned yet, but just installing it and reflashing the 06 SI ECU to accept this key, we're gonna see how it performs. Probably very similar 
to what it would perform if we'd put a K20 uh, A or a Z3 in here as well. But we've got a K24 uh, A2 TSX motor. It's the one out of my TSX actually, uh, the one that got crashed. So um, we're going to go see what it'll do in our little eighth mile run here. Getting all sorts of codes. Uh, Hill start assist isn't working. Uh, check IMA system and uh, one other one as well. Oh, VSA, check VSA system. Now this particular computer does not have VSA. This is the 06 Civic. Uh, I'm gonna probably get an 07 Civic ECU for this before we tune it. And that will allow us to uh, have VSA working as it would uh, stock. I don't think this track, car's gonna go to the track a lot. So having VSA is not gonna be a big uh, issue. All right. All right, zero out. We're ready. A lot of wheel spin. Ten sixty three. That's pretty damn quick. And again, that's no tune yet. Let's go back, we'll do it one more time. See if we can get a similar one. Had quite a bit of wheel spin there in first gear to be expected. Uh, I can smell a little rubber. And uh, we'll see if we get similar wheel spin uh, on the second round, if I can maybe uh, control a little bit better. And had actually quite a bit of wheel spin in second gear too, but the car, I wanted to make sure the car didn't bog, so I just kind of let it spin a little bit. Let's let it zero out again. Man, this car drives nice. All right, here we go. much better acceleration. If I did it five more times, I probably could get it down in 10-3 section, or 10-3 area somewhere. That was pretty good. A little bit of wheel spin, uh, not too bad. Uh, second gear, not bad at all. Uh, looks like the camera's shifting. Let's see if we can turn it back. So much torque. The chassis twisted coming off the line. 10.49, 74 miles an hour. That's going to stack up pretty good. Wow. I am super happy with that. The car is quick and runs like that engine was meant to be in there. Listen to the sound of this exhaust. It sounds amazing. I think that sounds really good. What do you guys think? All right, that's gonna wrap it up for this episode of uh, VTech Academy. Hope you enjoyed it. Next time you see us with this car, we're gonna be at the dyno, and then we're gonna give it back to the owner, and we're gonna take it up South Mountain and he's gonna give us his driving impressions on this compared to what it was stock. And he also used to own a supercharged version of this. So he's gonna compare it with that as well. Anyways, guys, thanks a lot for uh, checking us out here at VTEC Academy. Please think about liking and subscribing. Uh, we'd love to uh, hear your comments. If you wanna make a comment below, we try to look at all the comments when the video comes out and uh, we'll catch you next time. Thank you.